Section 7.7, .7, Trends for Group 1A and Group 2A Metals. Group 1A metals are called the alkali metals, and alkali um, means that it's going to turn basic if it's in water. Uh, they're all very soft, so maybe the consistency of, of hard cream cheese or frozen ice cream, something like that, you could cut it with a knife easily. And because it's in group 1, it tends to form cations. It loses an electron. It's easily oxidized. It has very low um, ionization energy, so it's, it's cheap to steal it. Um, you, can, you can form um, anything that's going to be uh, ionic very easily with nonmetals. Um, because they're so reactive and they form compounds so easily, you don't ever see them in nature. You only see their compounds. And so if you were to get some pure sodium or lithium or whatever, uh, normally it has to be produced and then kept under um, maybe oil, mineral oil or something like that, because it would react with everything. It would react with itself. It would react with the air. It would react with everything that you put it on. And so um, it's not just highly uh, reactive. It's also very low melting points, has a low density, so just very reactive. It reacts with water. So um, even, even the small ones with lithium uh, can react with, uh, with water. Uh, the sodium is even more violent. It can even ca catch on fire. The, hi the hydrogen gas that's emitted can catch on fire. And then as you go further down the group, it's more and more violent. As you get to cesium, you know, it would explode that glass all over the lab. Alkali metals also react with oxygen. So uh, lithium doesn't, uh, but the farther down you go, the more reactive it would be with oxygen. So um, they form peroxides, not just oxides, but they form peroxides to where it's um, O2, uh, it'll be O2 negative 2, so, so you can have something like lithium peroxide or, or potassium peroxide. They even form superoxides where it's O2 negative 1, so it's an oxygen, it's di dioxygen with a negative 1 charge, and that is called a superoxide. When you, you, when you have these alkaline metals, strontiums and rubidiums and anything like that, potassiums, they're normally very brightly colored. They're um, easily, because that electron is out there, stuck out there by itself, it's easily excitable, and then that electron drops back down and you get all kinds of really cool colors. Uh, you use them in fireworks too. The alkaline earth metals are in group two, and so they are going to be harder, uh, you know, more dense. Uh, they lose two electrons. They still form cations, but they're going to form a plus two. Uh, the, they are more reactive as it goes down the group, just like group one was. Beryllium doesn't react with water. Uh, magnesium doesn't react with water, but it'll react with steam. And then calcium and anything else below it would, would react with water to make a hydroxide. That's where you're going to get your strong bases. Your strong bases are your... Um, group 1 hydroxides, and then your lower calcium, more than calcium, lower hydroxides will break apart easily in water.